This incredible story started with a simple text message. Seth Jackson thought, you know, his ex-girlfriend wanted to work things out. So she'd ask him to, you know, come and meet at her house. You know, just the two of them. It could be really private and intimate. And of course, it would be a chance for them to put their messy breakup behind them and finally move on. But by the end of the night, he would face the darkest betrayal imaginable. And it's all because, well, you're about to find out. What's going on, Midnight Mafia? Thank you so much for joining me for another episode. I just want to quickly let you guys know, Hell Month, yes, every year. Two years now, it's a three-year tradition. Two years ago, I started it, Hell Month, in October, leading up to Halloween. At first, I did a Hell Week, then I did a Hell Month. We're doing Hell Month again, but this time, this time it's a little more crazy. We are doing, all together, 20 episodes. 12 new on here, four new on shadows in the wild and for on exclusive podcasts so 20 episodes in 30 days do you think you guys will be able to catch up i hope so because i'm doing it all for you guys and i love y'all so much so make sure if you haven't hit that like button or subscribe do that right now but without any further ado as of now it's time to slip into a mind that's not our own let's go So Seth Jackson in this quiet community of Summerfield, which is in Marion County. He was known for his contagious smile and his outgoing personality and he just loved to always have fun with his brothers and Seth was like any other kind of 15 year old boy. You know, he spent his days just hanging out with his brothers and his friends, dreaming actually of becoming a UFC fighter. And of course, he also spent most of that time flirting with his lovely crush at that time, who was Amber Wright. But as it often happens with teenagers, you know, relationships at that stage of your life become kind of messy. And what started as a whirlwind of romance between Seth and Amber quickly soured out. And it led to nothing but, you know, jealousy, accusations, and eventually heartbreak. And that is when their relationship took a very dark turn in March 2011, after Seth discovered that Amber had been seeing another boy on the side, an 18-year-old named Michael Bargo. Now, no one at that time could have predicted that this high school love triangle would end up being the backdrop for the most craziest thing this town might have ever gone through. And it sent shockwaves through Bellevue. I mean, I'm sure we've all heard many times about these teen dramas that might escalate into a deadly plot, but have you really ever heard one like this? Well, I guess you're about to find out. Okay, so the breakup between Seth and Amber, it wasn't just messy, it was completely toxic. Of course, fueled by jealousy and anger, they started, you know, taking jabs at each other publicly, of course, online, now that we have Facebook and other stuff like that, and this is where they used as a battleground, Facebook. And the heated exchanges between Seth and Amber, you know, caught the attention of Michael Bargo, who was already, you know, nurturing this intense hatred for Seth. In fact, Bargo actually believed for some reason that Seth had abused Amber. And he became fixated on the idea that Seth had to be eliminated. But of course, Bargo wasn't just content harboring these feelings quietly. No, no, no. Instead, he began, you know, recruiting others to help him execute this sinister plan. I mean, first he convinced Amber, of course, along with her brother, Kyle Hooper, who was only 16 years old. And then this other 20 year old named Justin Soto and a mutual friend of theirs named Charlie Eli, who was 18. And he recruited all of these people to join him in a scheme that would culminate in Seth's death. I mean, you can imagine as a 16, 17, or 18 year old in high school when somebody's like, oh, I hate him, I just want to kill him, and your friend's like, yeah, totally, you need help? <laughs> but you never really think it's actually going to go that far, do you? And Bargo was determined to set up a trap inside of a house, have Seth Jackson come inside that house, and make sure that Seth Jackson never left that house. So in the days leading up, the group, you know, schemed and plotted their little plot, and with Amber as the key point to their plan, she knew exactly how to kind of lure Seth in. 
by preying on his emotions. So her text message to him was very, very simple. All she said is, I wanna work things out. And it was just enough to convince Seth to, you know, let his guard down. Against his better judgment, I mean, he agreed to meet her even though his friends were literally warning that, you know, this might be a trap. And as Seth, you know, made his way to Charlie Eli's trailer on April 17th, 2011, he couldn't shake the nagging feeling that, you know, something was actually off. So that's when he took out his phone and he messaged Amber telling her, you know what? If you have me jumped, I will never give you the time of day again. And that's when Amber, of course, reassured him with the sweet words, oh, I could never do that to you. I just, I just want you back. And with that, Seth let his emotions kind of take over, and he walked right into the trap. Inside that trailer, the group was already waiting. And as soon as Seth stepped right inside, he was ambushed. Kyle Hooper was the first to strike, smashing Seth in the head with a wooden object, probably a bat. Seth at this point is kind of stunned and, you know, just bleeding, and he didn't have the time to react before Michael Bargo opened fire with the 22 caliber revolver that he had in his back pocket, hitting Seth multiple times. But Seth didn't die. And in a desperate attempt at this point to escape, Seth managed to, you know, kind of move around and then stumble outside. But his attackers right behind him were relentless. And that's when Justin Soto did his part and, you know, tackled him in the yard as he was getting away. And then the others kind of just all grabbed him and they put him right back into the house. And Seth then was thrown into a bathtub. And what happened next was just truly unimaginable. Because at this point, he's been shot, he's been hurt, he's trapped, he's helpless. And Seth was at the mercy of Michael Bargo's rage. And that's when he was shot again. And again. And again. And again. Each bullet leaving him weaker and weaker. Almost if you could imagine, I know this is a cruel way to describe it, but like in like the Mortal Kombat games where the person's life just keeps going down and down and down. But you see, at this point, it's sick because Bargo wasn't even close to being done. His hatred for Seth ran so deep that he wanted to make sure Seth not only died, but had suffered from torture before he died. So he was cursing and then beating Seth as the other members of the group just kind of looked in silence like, okay. And maybe I think that's when one of the members finally realized what they were doing was so terribly wrong. But finally, 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 Bargo ended this torment by shooting Seth right in the middle of the face, ensuring his death. Seth Jackson at this moment, sadly, was gone. His life was stolen in one of the most brutal ways imaginable, but the horror didn't end there. Not by a long shot. Because now with Seth dead, the group had to get rid of the evidence. So they wrapped his lifeless body into a sleeping bag and then they carried him literally outside into a fire pit that was right behind their trailer. And that's when there they put some lighter fluid on him and they set his body on fire. And they all just kind of sat back and watched as the flames just consumed of what was left of Seth at this point. And while the fire just raged on, Bargo and Amber Wright went to bed, leaving Kyle Hooper to tend to the burning remains. Such a good friend. So now, hours later, when the fire finally started to die down, the group, you know, shoveled literally what was left of Seth's body, the ashes, the bone fragments, the bits of tissue into these paint buckets that they had. And then the next morning, the final part of the cover-up was set into motion. Amber Wright's mother's ex-boyfriend, 37-year-old James Havens, arrived with cinder blocks and cables. And without hesitation at all, Havens now helped this group dispose of Seth's remains, dumping these buckets into a remote quarry outside Ocala, Florida. And they believed that by sinking, you know, the buckets to the bottom of the quarry, they could erase all evidence of their crime and make it as if Seth was never here at all, or for that point, even alive. But what they didn't expect is a couple things. For one, a lot of you better know this out there, the truth like light always has a way of shining through even just a little bit 
And of course, what they didn't count on was that the truth would unravel quicker than any of them could have possibly imagined. Literally within hours of Seth's disappearance, Kyle Hooper, you know, just ended up cracking under this intense pressure. He couldn't live with himself. He just couldn't internally handle it. So he had to do something about it. So he went up to his mother and then he confessed all the details of this murder to his mother because he was just unable to live with the horror of what they had just done. So of course the mother, you know, hesitantly picks up the phone to call police, knowing that her son is probably gonna be in a lot of trouble. And then once the police were involved, it wasn't long before the entire group was arrested. And of course, each one of them tried to, you know, shift blame on the other one, claiming that, you know, they didn't really realize that Bargo intended to kill Seth but it was too late. I mean, it was too late for all of that because the evidence that they had now was overwhelming. They had the remains found in the fire pit and quarry, the murder weapon recovered from Eli's trailer, and the confessions of their co-conspirators all pointed to their involvement. In the end, you could say justice was served, though no sentence could ever bring Seth Jackson back to life. But Amber Wright, Kyle Hooper, Justin Soto, and Charlie Eli were all sentenced to life in prison. James Havens, the 37-year-old who had helped them with the disposal of Seth's body, was sentenced to time in prison as an accessory after the fact. As for the prime antagonist of this story, Michael Bargo, the ringleader, you could call him, of this brutal murder, well, he was sentenced to death becoming Florida's youngest death row inmate ever. And of course the crime, you know, shocked the nation. And even years later, people were just left reeling and wondering, you know, how something so horrific like this could happen between kids barely old enough to drive. So as we can clearly at this point see, jealousy, rage, and manipulation is a deadly combination. So next time your ex-girlfriend tells you, you know, she wants to make up with you. Just think about this story and then think, is it worth it? Now, if you are a huge fan of these stories and you're thirsty for another episode, I have the perfect story for you right here that'll literally make you believe in the paranormal at first and then something much darker. So make sure to click right here to check that out right now. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you soon. Cheers.